i think we should start letting the participant participants in yeah sandeep go for it if dr arun is ready yes yes i'm ready okay so i'm starting the webinar then yep so few minutes i'll wait uh, to look up the participants number then i will start right yes sir thank you Shall we start, Sandeep? Yes, sir. I think we should. Yeah. Greetings to all, and welcome to another Wildlife Affairs webinar, everyone. We have gathered here today on the sixth of July to observe World Zoonosis Day. I would like to share my uh, presentation now. so that we can get on to the mainstream of the presentation is my screen visible to everyone on a full screen mode yes, yes sir it's very much yeah all right so myself dr arun the director research and veterinary operations at wildlife swesh world zoonosis day commemorates the work of french biologist louis pasteur on 6th july 1885 pasteur successfully administered the first vaccine against rabies a zoonotic disease hence we wanted to take this opportunity to educate people and raise awareness of diseases that can spread between animals and people so i would like to start 
my presentation with an acknowledgement of all my teachers and mentors and co-founders of Wildlife Israel, Mr. Kartik Satyanarayan and Geeta Seshmani, and all my colleagues and vets within and outside the Wildlife Israel organization. And I have referred a lot of resources uh, uh, in the presentation. It's not uh, everything uh, from our own uh, invention or uh, discovery. So it's all uh, gathered from different uh, peer-reviewed journals and articles and online resources. And uh, if anyone is interested in sharing or uh, uh, look into all these references, I'm happy to share at the end of the presentation. So coming into zoonosis. Zoonosis are derived from the Greek word. Zoon means animal and noson is disease. Zoonosis was coined and first used by Rodolf Virchow, who was in the picture, defined it for communicable diseases, but diseases and infections which are naturally transmitted. I just made the word naturally transmitted in a red font because uh, you have to understand the diseases and infections which are naturally transmitted between vertebrate animal and humans as per the WHO uh, definition uh, in 1959. So uh, these uh, diseases or infections may be caused by viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, etc. And it basically weakens the immune system and capable of mutilating rapidly. Now we are all aware that how much uh, COVID-19 or short COV2 is mutilating and we keep expecting different ways and number of ways and uh, uh, we are trying to get over the situation. So uh, some of the zoonotic uh, diseases are very well known to all of us, which are rabies, avian influenza, Japanese encephalitis, leptospirosis, Ebola, mad cow disease, HIV AIDS, SARS, malaria, cholera, swine flu, plague and anthrax. So within zoonosis, there are different uh, uh, main words to understand. Those were nothing but Emerging zoonosis as a zoonosis that is newly recognized or newly evolved or that has occurred previously but shows an increase in incidence or expansion in geographical host or vector range as per the joint consultation uh, uh, happened between WHO, FAO and OIE in the year 2004. Out of 1,415 microbial diseases affecting humans, 61% are zoonotics, with 13% of species regarded as emerging or re-emerging. So this, this makes a major component of the zoonosis. So it's very pertinent. Uh, we all should be aware and then make more researches towards these areas so that we can definitely uh, save the humankind and also a lot of animals to avoid either zoonosis or uh, a reverse zoonosis, whatever it is. So, and some of the examples are like, as I already mentioned, swine flu, uh, bovine uh, spongiform encephalitis, BSC, the Nifa virus, avian influenza, and hunter virus in USA, especially because these are emerging uh, zoonosis. And there is another word called neglected zoonosis. The vast majority of zoonosis are not prioritized by health system at national and international level and are labeled neglect. We don't know the reason because we used to those diseases. For example, bovine tuberculosis, brucellosis, leishmaniasis, cysticercosis, and echinococcosis because they are sometimes sporadic. And at the same time, uh, we feel that uh, uh, it's, it's very rare, but uh, to be honest, those were neglected zoonosis. We need to be very careful about uh, those uh, neglected zoonosis. And I, I strongly feel the veterinarians working in the field, uh, uh, especially with livestock, they need to be very careful and take some of those uh, uh, things seriously so that the neglected zoonosis will also be addressed adequately so that we can help both animal as well as the human. And wildlife and zoonosis, as we all know, disease is a complex process with uh, which involves host, environment, and pathogen. And here, in the pie diagram, you can very well say and see that the wildlife host species richness is a significant predictor for the emergence of zoonotic emerging infectious diseases with a wildlife origin. 
basically it it's originate from the wildlife which has got no role for human population growth latitude or rainfall it's a simple difference between these two and when uh, the same emergence of zoonotic eid eid is nothing but emerging infectious disease from non wildlife host is predicted by human population density human population growth latitude and not by wildlife host species richness so it's, it's a simple fact you can even see uh, uh, the human livestock and wildlife how are they contributing between them and uh, if when it comes to wildlife host species richness it is entirely depending on the wildlife uh, uh, origin i mean this is nothing to do with the human uh, 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 demography so uh, and on the other side the emerging of uh, uh, zoonotic eid from a non wildlife host which which we can uh, call it as a domestic uh, uh, animal host which is entirely depend on uh, us because they are primarily having lot of interaction uh, with people or uh, they are uh, uh, in uh, congregation or even uh, uh, in support of they are living in support of human being so when we are uh, talking about share of zoonotic diseases you can uh, see uh, the reference from uh, john setall 2008 the wildlife zoonotic uh, denoted in the white bar in the in the diagram gives you a clear picture that the major zoonoses are from wildlife and when we are talking about zoonosis we need to understand some of the basic classifications i mean many of the vets uh, uh, generally knows about this but i just wanted to uh, have a quick uh, um, uh, uh, brief uh, about uh, these titles and these uh, uh, classification of zoonosis is basically uh, depending on uh, three uh, major uh, divisions i mean according to the etiological agent bacterial zoonosis you have plenty of examples like anthrax and brucellosis viral zoonosis rabies arboviral infections kfd yellow fever recurrential q fever murine typhus tick typhus protozoal zoonosis is toxoplasmosis trypanosomiasis etc and helminthic zoonosis are echinococcosis hydatid cyst uh, or hydatid disease uh, tineosis uh, cystosomiasis etc and fungal zoonosis are deep mycosis histoplasmosis leptococcus and ectoparasites example scabies and miasis so these are according to the etiological agent and other classification is according to the reservoir host is anthropozoonosis infections transmitted to man from lower vertebrate animals example rabies leptospirosis plague arboviral so these are to man from lower vertebrate animals and zoo anthropo nosis those were infected from man i mean infections transmitted from man to lower uh, vertebrate animals example streptococci staphylococci diphtheria human tuberculosis in cattle and parrots and amphizoonosis is infections maintained in both man and lower vertebrate animals and transmitted in either direction example salmonellosis and staphylococcus so this is primarily the reservoir host based classification the other one is mode of transmission here the so direct zoonosis is from an infected vertebrate host to a susceptible I mean, susceptible host which is man by direct contact or through homites so those are rabies anthrax brucellosis leptospirosis cyclozoonosis is is actually it requires more than one vertebrate host species but no invertebrate host for the completion of the life cycle of the agent echinococcus the number of uh, 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 herbivores are omnivores actus intermediate host and the carnivores actus definite host so and the next uh, classification i mean uh, based on mode of transmission is metazoonosis transmitted biologically by invertebrate vector in which the agent multiplies and or develops and there is always an extrinsic incubation pre patent period before transmission to another vertebrate host example plague arbovirus which actually mosquitoes uh, 
and even snail uh, for uh, cystosomiasis and even sand fly for leishmaniasis. So those were the invertebrate host. And saprozoonosis is nothing but require a vertebrate host and a non-animal development site like soil, plant material, pigeon droppings, etc., for the development of the infectious agent, example, aspergillosis, coccidiomycosis, cryptococcosis, histoplasmosis, etc. The major factors influencing the emergence of zoonotic diseases. So etiological changes in environment and agricultural operations, example, leptospirosis, plague. So those were primarily uh, uh, the influencing factor and increased movement or traveling, whether it is an uh, uh, international or intranational, so the, uh, or domestic. So it, it increases the, uh, um, uh, I mean, it influences the emergence of zoonotic disease because the, uh, 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 the disease can be easily transmitted because of a wide uh, range of uh, transport system available now. And handling animal byproducts and waste, the, those things are also a potential uh, uh, influencing factor uh, for emerging uh, zoonotic disease. And you can see some of the examples like tularemia, brucellosis, even anthrax, salmonellosis, bird flu. And the other uh, influencing factor is the density of animal population, dermatophytosis and tuberculosis. It's again a, a high number of uh, animals in a, a given point of area which also increases uh, such kind of uh, uh, zoonotic uh, emergence. And pathogen changes like genetic shift or drift. Example, influenza E. coli. We can even take our own COV2. Cephalococcus are all like, they are uh, uh, changes uh, within the uh, genetic uh, makeup. There are certain factors are also leading to zoonotic outbreaks, frequent contact and consumption of domestic or wild animals, close encounters with wildlife habitats, poor sanitation hygiene while handling animals, intensive livestock production, wildlife trade, and human movement. So I'll talk about human uh, movement uh, in a following slide with a better uh, image. So uh, there are uh, uh, primary drivers of disease so far, and the first four uh, uh, will be really interested uh, uh, to me at least. Uh, the land use change is the major uh, driver for uh, the emerging infectious disease event. And uh, agricultural industry change, and international travel and commerce, medical industry change. So the, these first four uh, has got an enormous uh, 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 implication on this uh, uh, EIDs events. Uh, and also acts as a primary drivers of diseases so far. And the transmission type, uh, as we all know that there are multiple stages like agents only in animals uh, uh, is, is actually a first stage one. And the second stage infection is the primary infection. And stage three is limited outbreak. And stage four is long outbreak. And stage five is exclusive human agent. On the other side, you can see, I mean, the HIV is uh, from an animal directly to one other human being. And if you, if you take dengue, it takes from animal uh, to human beings, but sometimes it takes few cycles of transmission. And on the other side, Ebola from uh, bats uh, through primates, it again uh, reaches to another uh, uh, primate. But it, it's, it's actually uh, uh, um, termed as limited outbreak. So there are multiple ways of transmissions here. It's, it looks... Uh, uh, complicated, but if we uh, get into the detail, it has got a clear cut trend. So, if we catch hold of the trend, it is very easy to identify the transmission process of every disease. And accordingly, we can improve our understanding and research potential on those uh, diseases so that we can curtail the disease before it has uh, uh, beyond the uh, um, control of or beyond uh, the uh, controlling uh, side. And the hotspots of zoonotic diseases, um, uh, we can very well say that uh, uh, lower latitude developing countries like Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Cambodia, kind of uh, uh, countries are, uh, are really uh, uh, access hotspots uh, due to zoonotic pathogens uh, from wildlife. And the other EID events are dominated by zoonosis, 
the uh, uh, 60 percentage, uh, for example, 60 percentage of the uh, EIDs are uh, zoonosis. Uh, majorly, uh, majority of these are uh, originate in wildlife. So the majority in the sense uh, 71 percentage uh, out of uh, the 60 percentage of zoonosis is primarily from wildlife. There is another statistics uh, which was actually available online and the Royal Society uh, publishing.org is the uh, uh, source I have collected this information that number of disease outbreaks are uh, keep increasing when the years uh, goes up and though we have good uh, scientific uh, potential to even uh, uh, withal the uh, disease or even to produce more uh, uh, preventive uh, measures but still um, it's, it's very uh, uh, disappointing that uh, the civilization uh, makes sometimes uh, uh, with no ethical uh, concepts leads to a lot of uh, disease outbreaks. And uh, on the left side, you can see 70 percentage of all the uh, emerging diseases are zoonotic and likely to rise. Five new diseases emerge somewhere on the planet every year. No knowledge of estimated 1.5 million viruses in wildlife. Only around 3,000 are only known. Over 2 million deaths every year. One out of four people affected. So it's, it's very important for us to understand the statistics so that uh, globally the zoonosis is uh, playing a major role and uh, each and every uh, scientific community people should uh, give some quality time to uh, understand and make sure uh, the public and also the mm, uh, uh, behavior of the people towards uh, uh, animals or even uh, some of those hygienic practices uh, has to be uh, insisted upon so that they will not uh, accidentally uh, mm, uh, create an uh, outbreak or even uh, uh, need to face the pandemic, something like we are facing currently. And statistics on zoonosis in uh, India the high population leading to increase the sharing of spaces with animals. So we all know that we are all in uh, in in their uh, uh, habitat, and we always uh, feel like they can only uh, survive in a, a, a limited space or whatever the space we are uh, supposed to uh, provide them, so, which is definitely uh, uh, not true. And at the same time, uh, the human uh, uh, kind has to face such kind of issues because. Uh, uh, it's, it's a kind of imbalanced approach between the ecocentrism and anthropocentrism. And uh, uh, the other uh, uh, fact is the low preparedness. So uh, as long as we are uh, uh, understand about all these uh, zoonotics, then definitely uh, we will be strict in our approach towards uh, uh, handling those uh, uh, preventive measures. And uh, if, if you are not aware of uh, uh, the disease potential or even the reason or the risk factors involved in any emergence of uh, uh, zoonosis, then definitely we'll have to face some kind of tragedies like uh, even the current uh, SARS-CoV-2. So the, in India, uh, we have got the highest uh, uh, zoonotic problem of rabies and the second uh, uh, highest is the leptospirus and the third one is uh, brucellosis, anthrax, all those uh, uh, three uh, major zoonoses are almost in equal uh, numbers, but common zoonotic diseases of India, which require a lot of research. So, uh, so that is where uh, some of those neglected or even re-emerging diseases needs to be uh, on our priority list so that we will not miss out anything about the known diseases. And the top zoonotic outbreaks in India, as we all know that uh, uh, pneumonic plague in Surat in 1994, and in 2004, uh, we faced a cholera outbreak in Orissa. Death toll was 33. In 2006, dengue outbreak, 3,600 plus cases and 50 deaths. And bird flu in West Bengal in 2008. In 2009, we uh, uh, had swine flu in India. Why not three deaths all over India? And in 2015, swine flu outbreak, 218 mortalities. Into our, uh, 2018 Nifa virus outbreak in Kerala, 17 deaths. So uh, in the past, I mean, before the, the current pandemic, those deaths were also really uh, uh, major uh, numbers because uh, uh, 
uh, we took a lot of time to contain the disease within that geographical location. But now uh, in Corona, we lost um, several crores of people. So anyway, I'll come into uh, that in, uh, uh, in my following slides. And risk factors for zoonotic disease uh, emergence are social, economical, and microbial. So social in the sense human behavior, as you can see in the picture that we handle them and then uh, the amount of healthcare, uh, what we are uh, giving and the mobility, demography and public health measures. So those were the risk factors uh, with respect to social and ecological, animal contacts, agricultural practices, fisheries, environmental pollution and global warming. They're all ecological factors that uh, contributes in zoonotic disease emergence and uh, the microbial mutation, the copying error, and recombination and reassortment. So, so within the microbial uh, community also, there will be a lot of uh, uh, risk factors. So that's also not in our hand, but uh, uh, these, these are all the risk factors uh, for us to uh, understand and address. And when we talk about the um, uh, mobility, so I just wanted to give this uh, um, global, flight map. So statistics on Saturday at 8.30 a.m., there were 10,000 flights a day on the sky. So it it's looks very uh, uh, simple, but you can, if you can imagine, it's actual satellite image of uh, 10,000 flight on air in a day, that too on a Saturday evening, uh, sorry, morning at 8.30 a.m. So 36.8 million flights occurred in 2017. So we were actually, uh, after two years in 2019 only, we uh, started facing this pandemic. And you, you can imagine that how soon or how, how uh, easily uh, a zoonotic can be shifted from one geographical location to another geographical location because the mobility or the commute in the current uh, era is beyond our imagination. So apart from the risk factors like social, ecological, and microbial, the economical impact is also to be kept in mind. So uh, you can see on, on this uh, uh, image that worldwide, because of rabies in 2013, loss was 200, $124 billion. It's not an even million, it's all in billion. In the, in, because of SARS in China, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Canada in 2003, $30 to $50 billion was the economic loss. In H5N1, avian influenza worldwide in 1997, around $30 billion was uh, the economical uh, loss. So it's, it's also uh, uh, important to understand the zoonotic not only uh, uh, creates social, ecological, and microbial uh, uh, risk. It's also an impact on the uh, economical part of it. So as destructive as wars, and severe socioeconomic losses, as I already mentioned, uh, a few of them from the uh, uh, image, and loss in both humans and animal populations. So it's not only the economic loss, it's also a life uh, loss for both humankind and animal population. And for a uh, major uh, uh, example that sixth century plague killed half the world's population. And in 14th century, Black Death is nothing but a bubonic plague pandemic, wiped out half of Europe. And in 20th century, Spanish flu killed almost 5% of the population. So, so it's, it's, as I said, loss in both humans and animals population uh, needs to be kept in mind. And there are several uh, organizations uh, uh, involved in zoonotic disease research. Uh, I, I just named a few World Health Organization. Uh, uh, RCZA is Roadmap to Combat Zoonosis in India and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and ICMR, Public Health Foundation of India, ICR, OIE, CSIR, and CCMB, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. And several other organizations are involved. National Institute of uh, National Institute for Communicable Disease in Delhi. So several uh, research organizations are um, uh, dealing with the zoonotic diseases. So it's it's uh, 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 
highly uh, uh, important and uh, we have given adequate importance also to uh, the research uh, organizations or institute uh, to make sure that we are keeping a track on all these uh, zoonotic diseases. And I just wanted to touch upon this uh, uh, coronavirus since we are all facing this uh, COVID-19 issue. So coronavirus is a, a large uh, a family of virus that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, as RCOV. Uh, uh, it has actually uh, observed in uh, 2000, uh, November 2002 in China and Middle East respiratory syndrome is MERS COV in 2012 in Saudi Arabia. So a novel coronavirus of zoonotic origin, it means this disease spread by humans, I mean animals to human. Outbreaks in healthcare workers indicate human to uh, uh, animal, uh, human to uh, human transmission. COVID-19 is a name uh, given by WHO on 11th February 2020. CO stands for Corona and VI for virus and D for disease. And uh, uh, the first person infected in Wuhan in China on 17th November 2019 has gone uh, on to affect over 18.4 crore people in over 150 countries around the globe, causing more than 39.8 lakh deaths. In India alone, 3.06 crore cases and 4.03 lakh deaths uh, were observed and recorded. The outbreak was declared in, uh, declared a public health emergency of international concern on 30th Jan 2020. It was declared as pandemic 11th uh, uh, March 2020. So it was actually declared as pandemic uh, in, in the month of March 2020 in India. First patient found in Kerala on 30th uh, Jan 2020, the affected uh, had travel history from Wuhan. The virus can cause uh, 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 normal uh, respiratory uh, issues and the uh, structure of the SARS-CoV-2 spike glycoprotein reveals the architecture of the key player uh, of virus entry into the host cells and provides a blueprint for vaccine design. Causes of COVID-19, now we all know that the zoonotic infection first developed in animal before developing in humans, for the virus to pass from animal to human, a person has to come into close contact with an animal that uh, carries the infection. That's why we uh, take all these uh, uh, preventive uh, cares like wearing masks and then trying to wear uh, goggles and not to spit everywhere. So there are a lot of do's and uh, uh, don'ts were very much, very much available on several uh, WHO um, pages. Uh, uh, and also uh, Indian government has also given uh, a COVID uh, appropriate behavior uh, so that uh, uh, we can be uh, uh, safe from the problem. And now everyone is uh, uh, getting vaccinated uh, for the uh, COVID. So uh, coronavirus hasn't been definitely linked to a specific animal. There are multiple school of thought that uh, it has been passed from bats to other animal, but there was no uh, proof. and. Uh, mm, the transmission likely occurred in the open food market in Wuhan, China. So there are still a debate uh, about that. And as we all know that the high risk groups are elderly people more than 60 years and people with decreased immunity, people with comorbidities such as diabetes, hypertension, kidney diseases, etc. And then now we are all expecting the third uh, wave uh, may affect the infants as well. And the profile axis and treatment. Currently, no medications is recommended to treat COVID-19 and no cure is available except vaccination. Antibiotics are not effective against viral infections such as COVID-19. Monoclonal antibody treatments are uh, highly uh, 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 recommended now with the uh, Casirivimab and Imdevimab. Researchers are testing a variety of possible treatments. The funny fact, uh, it was actually uh, one of the uh, WhatsApp uh, message uh, or I found very interesting that uh, when Corona was less, uh, the fear of Corona was too much. And when Corona has really uh, um, uh, been everywhere around and people lost their fear and uh, they will be roaming around without mask and they won't even uh, follow some of the basic uh, uh, COVID appropriate behavior like social distancing and using uh, sanitizers, et cetera. So there are a lot of myth busters like <laughs> you know, transmitted through mosquitoes and 
hand, uh, hand dryers or even the hot blowers will uh, prevent the disease and ultraviolet light uh, should not be used for sterilization and can cause skin uh, irritation. Garlic is healthy, but there is no evidence from the current outbreak that eating garlic has protected from the coronavirus. Spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body will not kill <coughs> viruses that have already entered your body. So there are a lot of uh, myth busters, which is also available uh, online. <coughs> and we all know that the protective measures are washing hands frequently and maintain social distancing touching eyes, nose uh, frequently, practice respiratory hygiene and uh, exercises. And as we all know that the use of Arogya Setu uh, app recommended by the government also uh, gives a lot of uh, uh, information that um, are you really safe on that particular day. So uh, I just wanted to touch upon COVID-19 in animals, updates and uh, protocols followed in the Indian scenario. The uh, similar clinical signs were also observed and then uh, uh, like fever, coughing, difficulty breathing or uh, uh, next shortness of breath, lethargy, sneezing, nasal discharge, ocular discharge, vomiting, diarrhea, etc. And as per the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, there are possibility of SARS-CoV-2 infection through zoonotic transmission from humans to animals and vice versa. Because uh, uh, again, we don't have any uh, proof that uh, mm, uh, animals have uh, got these disease from the human, but there is no other option uh, because every uh, zoo uh, has got or every uh, captive animal has got the caretaker in every zoo and then protecting them from the zoo or even wearing PPE or even uh, vaccination for them is uh, really priority. Uh, experimental uh, studies have shown transmission of uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection in cats, dogs, tiger, Asiatic lion, and other domestic and wild animals. Dog naturally carries viruses in their gastrointestinal respiratory tract. As we all know that we, one of our uh, uh, seven in one or 10 in one or 12 in one or uh, 14 in one carries the coronavirus uh, uh, protection against uh, the intestinal form of uh, gastrointestinal, I mean, intestinal form of uh, corona. And identification of SARS-CoV-2, uh, COV-2 potential host range to prevent zoonotic transmission, accelerating the process of vaccine and immunotherapies uh, uh, production against uh, SARS-CoV-2. And uh, in the past also, in uh, 2002 November and in uh, December 2019, we had two uh, different uh, SARS-CoV, uh, one and two. And, uh, uh, ecological origin are isolated from bats uh, in case of uh, COV-1 and in COV-2, uh, domestic or wild, domesticated wild animals, it has to be identified. And uh, both have actually first reported in China and the disease responsible is like uh, the same severe acute respiratory uh, syndrome and here it is a novel coronavirus disease. And the symptom associated is again a respiratory illness, dyspnea and pneumonia. Uh, uh, in, in, in both the um, uh, SARS and uh, it, it, uh, in COVID, uh, I mean, SARS uh, COV-1, uh, civet cats and humans and MERS, dromedary camels and humans and in COV-2, uh, uh, cats, dogs and ferrets, uh, humans are also part of uh, the infection and uh, uh, there are multiple uh, bibliographies available for both uh, COV-1 and 2. Actually, we have also got uh, a lot of uh, COV-2 uh, uh, infection uh, identified in several uh, zoos within our country, like uh, in uh, Aranyurana Zoological Park, Chennai, uh, there were eight lines, uh, or a few lines were uh, uh, isolated with uh, or identified diagnosed with COV-2 and eight lions in Hyderabad Zoo, death of a tiger uh, exhibiting COVID-19 symptoms in Ranchi Zoo, Jharkhand, lions tested uh, positive in Itawa Lion Safari in Uttar Pradesh, in Jaipur Zoo in Rajasthan, pangolin tested positive in Orissa for COVID-19. So there are multiple reports that are available, but still uh, we don't have a, a, a concrete evidence from where they have contracted the disease, but at the same time, 
we will be following the regular uh, preventive care and there are a lot of uh, 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 guidelines uh, given especially uh, the one uh, from uh, CSIR, CCMB uh, in collaboration with Central Zoo Authority uh, uh, actually uh, designated a center, one of the designated center for COVID-19 testing for animal samples and uh, uh, they have released uh, this guideline which is uh, uh, for captive animals and variety of animal uh, samples were tested, uh, primarily nasal, oropharyngeal, rectum, fecal samples uh, were taken for uh, uh, identifying COVID-19. <coughs> Prevention of COVID-19 in captive wild animal is advisory uh, asking zookeepers not to go close to the animal without safety gears, minimal contact uh, while feeding, routine examination and monitoring, ensuring daily physical activity, foot baths and sanitation, uh, station for employees, use of sodium hypochlorite is nothing but a bleach to clean, food and uh, thorough boiling of meat, vitamin and mineral supplementation to enhance immunity and vaccination. So the way forward for COVID-19 in wild animals is targeted pathogen surveillance for SARS-CO2 in wildlife, understanding of the epidemiology of SARS-CoV-2, develop frameworks to assess the risk of SARS-CoV-2, understand the implications of host pathogen interaction. So these are uh, uh, the way forward when uh, we really want to uh, uh, study more about uh, COVID-19 in wild animals, especially the captive wild animals we are talking about, because there was no such evidences. And uh, I found this paper was very uh, interesting, the broad host range of uh, SARS-CoV-2 predicted by comparative and structural analysis of ACE2 receptor in, in vertebrates. And in this article, uh, uh, human chimpanzee ra raises macaques are very high uh, um, uh, chances for the disease and reindeer dolphin is for high uh, chances and medium chances are for leopard, tiger, cheetah, hamster, cattle, water buffalo, goat, sheep, and cat. And uh, bears, rhinoceros, elephants, flying fox, panda, camel, donkey, horse, dog, and pig are having a low uh, uh, risk of this disease and a very low risk is palms uh, uh, with fruit bats and rats, guinea pigs and mouse. The major zoonotic diseases in the globe, uh, I just wanted to touch upon a few of the diseases like rabies, acute highly fatal disease. In India, rabies uh, account about 20,000 deaths annually. Most animal bites in India, 91.5% are by dogs, of which about 60% are stray and 40 percent are pets. Rabies is present throughout the country except in the islands. Incubation period is three to eight weeks. Next is the tuberculosis. Uh, in humans is most commonly caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, a slow growing waxy rod shaped bacterium transmitted primarily via the air when an affected individual coughs or sneezes. It's estimated that a third of the uh, a world is infected with this agent, which causes approximately 2 million deaths every year. Though most infections are asymptomatic, infection is becoming increasingly deadly due to both uh, a spread of highly antibiotic resistant strains and due to the increasing number of individuals with both HIV and TB. So it's, it's again because of the comorbidity and also uh, the same tuberculosis uh, uh, comes into uh, primarily captive wild animal, just as a spillover host because of the constant uh, sharing of the uh, space or even contaminants. The next disease is brucellosis, also called Banks disease, Permian fever, Gibraltar fever, Malta fever. So this is a caused by bacterium brucella, brucella militensis and brucella bartis and brucella swiss and brucella canis. Most human infections are caused by brucella Melitensis species in India. It is highly contagious zoonosis caused by ingestion of unsterilized milk or meat from infected animal or close contact with secretions. Acute brucellosis, prolonged uh, uh, bacteremia, irregular fever, chills, muscular and uh, articular pains, nocturnal uh, uh, drenching, sweats, exhaustion, anorexia constipation, nervous irritability or the uh, 
uh, clinical findings. And chronic uh, uh, brucellosis is uh, sweating, uh, uh, lassitude, joint pain with minimal or no pyrexia. The next one is plague, primarily uh, uh, through oriental rat flea, deadly infectious disease that is caused by the enterobacteria Yersinia pestis. Antician disease, the ancient disease, and has caused three pandemics since 6th century. India, fatal outbreak in 1994 and 2002 in Maharashtra and Simla respectively, transmitted by black rat, ratus, ratus, and oriental rat flea. Transmission by droplet contact, direct physical contact by soil contamination, airborne transmission, fecal oral transmission, and vector-borne transmission carried by insects or other animals. The next one is anthrax caused by bacterium, uh, Bacillus anthracis, oldest recorded disease of animal, human sequoia infection from cattle, sheep, goat, horses, and swine. Then enzootic in southern India, but is less frequent to absent in the northern Indian states. Anthrax in sheep is prevalent in sheep in Andhra, Tamil Nadu border, causing cutaneous and meningoencephalitic human infections with a high mortality rate. Outbreaks of anthrax have been reported from Mysore 1999, Orissa in 2004 and 5, West Bengal in the year 2000. Based on the route of infection, three clinical types. The first one is cutaneous anthrax follows entry of spores through aberrated skin. The typical lesions are pustules, which are more commonly seen on face, neck, hands and black, a uh, black. Pulmonary uh, anthrax occurs due to inhalation of dust of wool characterized by hemorrhagic bronchopneumonia. Intestinal anthrax is transmitted by ingestion of improperly cooked infected meat caused violent enteritis with bloody diarrhea. So we all know that uh, the carcass should not be opened or if the uh, spores uh, comes in contact with any of these uh, uh, modality, then we will have different clinical types. Leptospirosis is an emerging global public health problem caused by Leptospira interrogans naturally seen in rodents. Endemic in Andaman Island, southern uh, states of India, especially Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Karnataka, and Maharashtra, rodents, domestic and wild animals form the reservoir of infection. Domestic animals such as cattle, dogs, pigs may act temporary carrier. Rodents permanent carrier. Pickettial infections, they cause irreversible damage to human host associated with high morbidity and mortality. Mortality rate can be as high as 20 to 50 percentage, prevalent in JNK, Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Rajasthan, Assam, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. The zoonotic disease is considered important in India are epidemic typhus, murine typhus, strep typhus, positive agents of um, oh, uh, uh, Sutsko Musi, Indian tick typhus, and Q fever is Coxella vernacular. Kesno forest disease. KFD is a viral hemorrhagic fever, first reported in Karnataka in the year 1957. In the wild, the virus resides in the reservoir host like mice, porcupine, and shrews. Monkeys are considered as amplifying host. Ticks are the vectors. Hemophysal is uh, spiny gyra. Annually, an average of 500 cases are reported. 3 to 5 percentage is the mortality rate uh, uh, with respect to KFD. Malaria, we all know that recently discovered the zoonotic potential of plasmodium species. There are four major plasmodium species causing human malaria, transmitted between humans by mosquito, anaphylis species. The recent discovery of Plasmodium nullosi typically infect forest macaques and the disease can be transmitted to humans. The arboreal, uh, I mean, arboviral in, uh, arbovirus in India, the arboviral disease, Japanese encephalitis virus uh, uh, through zoonotic uh, cycle between mosquitoes, pigs, and water birds. Uh, uh, the Culex uh, mosquito acts as a vector. Dengue virus is the bite of Aedes aegypti. Bite during day, especially 
uh, early morning or in the evening. Globally, approximately 2.5 billion people live in uh, dengue risk regions with about 100 million new cases each year are recorded. India accounts for nearly one third of all dengue cases reported globally. Chikungunya fever transmitted by bite of Aedes aegypti. In 2006, more than 1.3 million people were affected by chikungunya virus, which prevailed across 150 districts of eight states in India. The Japanese encephalitis JE, caused by Japanese encephalitis virus, was the first recorded in Velour uh, and Pondicherry in the mid 1950s, transmitted through zoonotic cycle between mosquito pigs and water birds. Bite of Culex is a, a, act as a vector in the incubation period of 6 to 16 days. The clinical findings are fever, rigors, headache, and vomiting. Encephalitis syndrome, difficulty to see, ocular uh, palsies, hemiplegia, quadriplegia, tremors, altered sensorium, convulsions, and comas. Chikungunya fever, as I already said, it's uh, uh, transmitted. Uh, uh, by bite of Aedes aegypti, uh, the clinical findings of uh, fever, chills, anorexia, conjunctivitis, uh, morbidly from rash on trunk and limbs, coffee color vomiting, epistaxis, and petechiae. Prominent symptoms in adults is uh, uh, arthropathy pain, swelling, stiffness of the metacarpopharyngeal uh, uh, wrist, elbow, shoulder, knee, ankle, and metatarsal joints. Diagnosis is through detection uh, uh, in the serum. In the first three to four days with PCR or RT-PCR to detect viral DNA, symptomatic treatment and mosquito control is the uh, uh, primary prevention method and there is no vaccine available for chicken. Leishmaniasis is complex disease caused by the protozoan uh, leishmania in India, endemic in Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal and UP, manifest in two forms, cutaneous and visceral. That's it's known as Kalazar variety, Transmitted by the bite of female uh, uh, phlebotome um, uh, sandfly. Uh, clinical findings are fever, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, anemia, weight loss, darkening of skin of the face, hands, feet, abdomen, lymphadenopathy. Post colors are dermal leishmaniasis lesions develop consisting of multiple nodular infiltrations of the skin, usually without ulceration. Cutaneous leishmaniasis and visceral leishmaniasis are two major uh, 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 types of leishmaniasis. And cutaneous, it's painful also in the parts of the body exposed to sandfly bites, legs, arms, and uh, face. Uh, bone marrow and uh, spleen aspiration is the diagnostic method. I mean, the samples from bone marrow and spleen aspiration. Staining methods most appropriate for leishmania detection is one, uh, uh, employing uh, Panoptic me Granwart Jimsa stain. Classical blood agar, triple N medium, consists of 0.6% NACL added to a simple blood agar slope, is the most currently used medium. With respect to visceral leishmaniasis, PCR assay is found to be almost 100% sensitive using peripheral blood. Ultra sensitive PCR assay for visceral leishmaniasis, asymptomatic carriage in man, even in immunosuppressed patients. Other serological test, IFAT, immunoenzymatic techniques, countercurrent immunoelectrophoresis, IHA, and immune block. Easy test, direct agglutination test, RK39 immuno uh, uh, immunochromatography, dipstick, lattice particle agglutination, dot ELISA, and fast ELISA. Cryptosis and crypto uh, 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 cryptosercosis uh, uh, caused by two parasites, Tinea sagitta uh, and Tinea solium. Tinea solium is endemic in India and widely reported. Uh, Tinea saginata is moderately reported. Transmission is through ingestion of the infective cysticerca in undercooked pork, Tinea solium, or beef, Tinea saginata, through ingestion of food, water, of vegetables contaminated with X. Cysticercosis refers to tissue infection after exposure to X of tinea solium, the pork type. Of. 
And the other uh, zoonotic is toxoplasmosis caused by parasitic uh, parasite called uh, Toxoplasma gondii, uh, transmitted by infection by ingestion of tissue cyst present in raw or undercooked beef, lamb, or pork, and ingestion of oocyst from soil, water, milk, or vegetable. Toxoplasmosis is present worldwide with seropositive ranging from less than 10% to over 90%. Seroprevalence in India is about 22% approximately, can be transmitted congenitally in pregnant mothers. Acute toxoplasmosis is one of the form. It, it shows through swollen lymph nodes or muscle aches and pains that last for a month or more. Swollen lymph nodes are commonly found in the neck or under the chin, followed by the axilla, armpits, and the groin. Enlarged lymph node with resolve, will resolve within one or two months in 60% of the cases. Young children and immunocompromised people Severe toxoplasmosis leading to encephalitis and necrotizing retinochondroitis. Skin lesions, roseola and erythemia, multiforme like eruptions, urticaria, and uh, uh, maculopopular lesions. Managing a zoonotic outbreak is basically the uh, 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 information shared is all uh, uh, through scientific uh, means, organized surveillance uh, system, research into specific animal reservoirs, assessing anthropogenic land use changes, open platforms to share knowledge, or costing of zoonotic diseases. So I think with this uh, uh, slide, I am uh, uh, going to conclude. Uh, there are almost 70, per, uh, 70 described zoonotic uh, diseases in the world. It constitutes more than 60% of all the infectious diseases affecting humans. The major 13 zoonotic diseases alone kills 2.2 million people in a year. Three out of four emerging infectious infections coming from animals. There are multiple and complex set of challenges to zoonotic diseases control in India public awareness, ways to prevent zoonotic disease from CDC, personal hygiene and self-discipline, keep your hands clean, prevent bites from mosquitoes, ticks and fleas, love your pet and beware of zoonotic diseases, handle food and water safely, avoid bite and scratch from animals, existing public health systems and newer frameworks are opportunities to further the agenda of zoonotic disease prevention and control, and establishing partnership between academic and implementing, implementing agencies. So with this, I would like to thank uh, you all again to uh, uh, join with us uh, uh, today. We hope you gain some uh, valuable uh, information on this subject matter. Please do keep an, uh, an eye out of our social media for further webinars and visit us on our website for further queries. Thank you and stay safe. Uh, hello, Dr. Arun. Uh, yep. We can have our uh, question and answer session now. Yes. So we have some questions lined up for you. Um, yep. I think the first one from uh, Nisha is, uh, what are the measures you take to protect yourself against zoonotic diseases when you are constantly around wild animals like elephants and bears, etc.? Good. So generally, uh, not even a wildlife vet, I, I, I would uh, generally feel any vet uh, should be uh, very much aware of the uh, zoonotic diseases and also the occupational hazards. So uh, we uh, always uh, do a routine tetanus toxide vaccination, anti-rabies, and uh, we do get a uh, 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 check for our uh, chest x-rays and uh, blood uh, work uh, once in six months and uh, wherever necessary or whenever we are traveling outside the country based on the country's uh, uh, regularities we will be taking vaccines like if you are traveling to South Africa we will be taking yellow fever vaccine so it just depends on the um, uh, uh, beyond I um, mean whatever the boundaries we are uh, uh, crossing or entering but other than that uh, we always uh, make sure that um, 
anti rabies and uh, TT are the primary vaccines we always uh, uh, routinely follow and then make sure that uh, we should not uh, end up having any such kind of problems. And in my own, uh, uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, while I've practiced in the past 18 years, um, I, I got some uh, issues like uh, Q fever for my own son. Uh, and uh, it was a very good example that uh, uh, we carry ticks whenever we are going from the field and we should be uh, aware that uh, the zoonotic diseases uh, uh, transmitted through uh, these tick-borne uh, uh, problems has to be kept in mind and we should uh, uh, be very careful and make sure we will be taking utmost care about the uh, prevention and then make sure we are practicing uh, the hygiene uh, to safeguard our own self and also the family, uh, depending on us. Right. Uh, the next one we have from Dr. Chanchal is, uh, do you think that wildlife is a real threat for future pandemics uh, in the case of illegal wildlife trade and bushmeat consumption? That's true. Actually, uh, as long as uh, uh, we have some control over uh, the bushmeat and at the same time uh, uh, intrusion into any of those uh, uh, protected areas or basically the wildlife areas, uh, uh, definitely uh, be one of the good step forward to avoid such kind of uh, pandemics in uh, future. Mm. But having said that, mm, uh, uh, I even uh, forgot to mention in my presentation that the zoonotics are also evolves through the species. So uh, sometimes we have to be very careful uh, uh, to deal with uh, uh, different uh, species because uh, uh, every uh, species when they evolve, they may also uh, 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 try to uh, get over the uh, problems or even contracting the disease from uh, different species. So. Uh, we have to be very uh, careful and then uh, focus on better uh, scientific uh, intervention so that uh, uh, we won't uh, need to blame the wildlife for any kind of pandemic. Absolutely. Uh, the next from, from Dr. Uh, Prio is, uh, as forested areas are shrinking and the human wildlife interface is increasing, what is your suggestion for the safety and precaution of people who dwell in crow's uh, proximity uh, with forest areas or national parks or people who live in fringe areas uh, to prevent uh, occurrence of wildlife related zoonotic diseases? Right. It's a wonderful question, but uh, I may not be able to answer completely because that's a big policy level uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, measure that we need to uh, adapt and then make sure that uh, uh, people dwelling in and around the protected area or the wildlife uh, uh, reserves uh, to be well aware of all those uh, uh, pandemics or even uh, zoonotics so that uh, they will not provoke the animal and they don't need to uh, make the animal uh, attracted towards themselves. So if they, if they make uh, appropriate uh, hygiene practices, um, uh, even uh, throwing uh, trashes all around, uh, may definitely attract the animal living around their uh, um, uh, uh, perimeter or even in the protected areas uh, uh, will also uh, create some kind of uh, uh, trouble or even disturbance to the animal as well as the human being. So uh, I think uh, uh, as far as I know or understand, people living all around the uh, 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 villages or around the uh, protected areas uh, uh, needs to be less influenced uh, by the urban people. So, uh, so that they know, I mean, because they, they live in that kind of harmony for several years and uh, many a times when we interact with any of those uh, 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 people dwelling next to the forest or sometimes even the tribes, they've got a very good harmony with the uh, uh, animal living around them. So Very true, yeah. when, when, when they get to uh, know or uh, when they get influenced by the so-called uh, urbanized people, uh, they, they also start uh, getting into a kind of uh, a technological improvement and they try to uh, uh, do a lot of mistakes, uh, maybe unintentionally, 
uh, but that creates a lot of uh, uh, disturbance to the animal. And the first people, uh, those are going to face this human animal interface is those people. So that is why uh, uh, we as a uh, urban dwellers should not influence them uh, uh, to get into a, a, a kind of modern uh, uh, developments uh, and uh, that indirectly uh, affects the animal around uh, their protected uh, protected uh, mm. uh, lo localities right um so another question from deprio is uh, why are animals of the field day family more susceptible to COVID-19 symptoms uh, compared to other uh, animal families like Canada? Canada, sorry. Uh, that is what I was actually I was mentioning uh, uh, an article that uh, those were primarily based on the ACE receptors. So those ACE receptors are more uh, predominant in Felines, felidates. I mean felines. So that is why uh, felines are more uh, susceptible for the disease. But that that's uh, uh, that's that's basically their evolution. I mean we we don't have any uh, role over their receptors because these uh, uh, the virus is more uh, uh, affili. I mean uh, um, uh, I mean that their their affinity towards the ACE receptor is more. And that is the primary uh, reason, even when we talk about the smokers are the uh, first uh, set of people, uh, uh, those who are prone for the uh, COVID-19 is just because of the ACE receptor. So uh, as far as I know, uh, the receptor makes uh, uh, felines more susceptible for COVID-19. Right. Um, so the next question from Lucky is, uh, what kind of diseases can be transmitted from rhesus macaques to humans? As I said, uh, they were uh, uh, non-human primates and uh, many of the uh, uh, diseases, either the cut shell bone or even tick bone, uh, as I said, KFD, and uh, even uh, sometimes uh, uh, the uh, tuberculosis. So those are all the common uh, diseases, but it's all uh, uh, based on the locality. I mean, we can't generally a term uh, macaques always carries such kind of uh, problems, but they are prone for uh, uh, such problems when they are sharing or living in human dominated landscape. Otherwise, uh, um, as far as my knowledge is concerned, I don't think macaques are always carrying something to uh, give it off to a human being. So wherever they are highly uh, interacted with people or sometimes uh, People will be constantly feeding them on the roadsides when when the highways are passing through a, a protected area or even reserve forest. So they will be keep uh, throwing something, and those were literally contaminated food or sometimes a non uh, uh, macaque foods. They were uh, literally uh, lured by all those uh, uh, food materials. So uh, one side uh, feeding and wild animal itself is uh, unethical, and on the top of it. When we contaminate them with any of these human problems, and again, we will only get it back. So, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, some of the common diseases like uh, uh, tuberculosis and then uh, any of these uh, tick-borne diseases are only needs to be uh, addressed wherever you are dealing with uh, uh, macaques with respect to free-ranging animals. In captive conditions, uh, again, you may have to check their uh, uh, blood samples and also the chest x-rays so that uh, we will make sure that they are not uh, carrying any of those uh, zoonotic diseases. Right. Um, I think we have time for about two or three more questions. Um, the next one from Valarmati is: uh, What are the mandatory vaccines as a veterinarian uh, that a veterinarian should take? Uh, I don't. I don't see there is a mandate uh, as far as the law is concerned, but. Uh, it depends on the animal what you are dealing with, and as I already mentioned, uh, I personally take uh, rabies uh, that to once in two years at least because uh, we constantly check our uh, blood for uh, uh, antibody titers and whether it is uh, sufficient or not. So if it is really sufficient, I don't think you need to take the anti rabies virus. I mean anti rabies vaccine also on a uh, annual basis uh, once you are following it as routine. So you can even take it alternative years. And uh, 
uh, tetanus vaccine i think once in a year and uh, whenever you are getting hurt or if you get exposed to any of those bruises or contusions on your body then you should always go for a, uh, a tt vaccine and other than that uh, if there is any snake bite or any other issues then uh, uh, you will be going for some kind of uh, asv and other stuff so that, which are anyway not uh, comes under vaccine uh, but uh, these these two are only uh, the major uh, uh, vaccines which i feel uh, every vet should uh, uh, immunized right. with hmm. um okay the next one that we have is uh, uh what are the best ways to avoid tick and flea uh, from from us uh, especially if you're working in field conditions yeah and how do ticks we take care of it hmm. yeah so ticks and fleas uh, as we all know that they they really uh, get into a very furry or uh, a good coat uh, about the skin so uh, as long as we are uh, using a separate uh, set of clothes uh, when we are use uh, going for uh, uh, field and then as soon as you come back to your home or even uh, your accommodation so make sure that you are uh, taking out the uh, clothes and dipping it in a hot water and, and also taking a, a head bath uh, with a proper uh, Uh, hot water is more than sufficient or uh, better than any other chemical usage of uh, 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 materials i mean like either uh, uh, medicated shampoos or soaps uh, i don't think and i i, I never uh, used uh, uh, such uh, chemical substances to get rid of fleas and ticks so as long as you are uh, uh, practicing the hygiene uh, stuff uh, you are always safe mm. all right we have uh, one last question um in captive zoo animals uh, in captivity zoo animals have died due to herpes virus infection at present few cases have been noticed dead animals like kangaroo birds um i think this is a disease uh, transmitting from keepers is could this be true uh, what will be the preventative measures for something like this um a very good question but um, um, i may not be able to uh, answer completely because i have never worked with uh, ehv uh, but as far as i know that uh, i don't think uh, uh, keepers are uh, fomites act as a, a carrier for this uh, uh, disease so uh, probably we can look into this matter and then take some uh, samples so that if there is any uh, other uh, mode of transmission is happening then uh, we will be able to address this uh, issue but other than that um, i have no concrete answer for this question i'm sorry about that mm. uh, all right dr arun i think this ends our question and answer session i'll just hand right. over the rest of the session to you yeah, i am uh, really uh, thankful to wildlife resources to organize such a wonderful uh, webinar and it's a good platform uh, for us to discuss about the zoonotic and it is actually the need of the r and then uh i hope everyone uh, enjoyed it and then uh, uh get to know some kind of uh, information about zoonosis and once again uh, thank you all and stay safe and uh, all of you please get vaccinated for covid-19 thank you one and all